Good morning, everybody. It's Mason and Matt with Newbart. Good morning. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that is doesn't apply to everybody. Mm -hmm. But if you're the one making the badges at your office um, and have a hard time deciding how templates work and manipulate them to give you the best badge you can have, um, this video is for you. Sure. So today we're talking about uh, Assure ID and how to make the badges and produce them. But we kind of keep it on a basic level. So how to make uh, regular fields, um, data entries, data fields, and uh, more importantly, conditional fields. Matt, what are conditional fields? So conditional fields can be something as simple as, um, you know, colors changing between the grade levels. So basically you set it up within the software where it says, you know, if, if this, this data field meets this criteria, then this will happen. So for example, um, you know, uh, back to school, um, you know, we basically set it up where if grade equals six, then that means the color will change to blue. If grade equals seven, then that means that it will change to red. Or it could be something where, um, you know, it's a certification, right? So maybe somebody's forklift certified. And if they, if the certification is switched from no to yes, then something populates on the ID that lets other people know, hey, mm -hmm. that person's received certification on this equipment. So, sure. you know, setting up things like that. So basically, it allows you to identify different groups within the same badge with a different visual reference. Sure. So let's get to it. Okay, so now that you have a Sure ID open, notice on the left you have three separate points of contact that you can do, reports, data entry, and card design. For the purpose of designing a card, we'll be in card design. Anything here on the white is actually going to print on your card. Anything on the gray will not be on your card. Starting out now, it, it came up as a horizontal single-sided card. If you wanted to change that on card design, you can switch it from portrait to landscape or a dual sided card. For this purpose we're only going to do a single sided card and let's go ahead and make it portrait. Next thing we want to do is decide what we want to do on the card. Under home you have all of these options. Let's talk about what the different options do. Let's start with a text label because I assume everybody already knows what cut, copy, and paste is. A text label is something that stays on the every uh, individual card. So for your company, your address would probably stay the same on everybody's card. Or if it's a school, the name of the school is always the same for every single card. Data field. Data field is like a text label, but it's changes per person. This is going to be your name, your ID number, type of situation. Your grade, that will all go through. The point of those is this is something that does not stay the same. It changes for every single card. A compound field is where you can merge two data fields together. For example, if I have two different data fields for my first name and my last name, and I want to combine them on the same row together, I can make that data field which will take my individual first name and my last name and combine it into one field. Photo. Photo is simply that. It is your photo. It is like a data field because it changes per person. The easiest way to set this up is to create a destination folder as well that you can have your photos in. Most times you save it by their student ID number or employee ID number. That way you can reference that by then and it'll save that photo as student ID number dot JPG. So if you're a school and your district uh, likes to have your photos, you can easily map it back to that folder. So we'll do that. We're going to skip the signature pad today because it's just like a photo, but it's a digital signature instead of a photograph. Image field. Image is going to be like a text label for the photos. It's a 
image that does not change per card. This would be your company logo. Background is simply that it is a background that you can pick an image if you have a image that you want in your background at all times that will take care of it. And of course the shapes we can get into when we start talking about conditional, conditional fields and you can make them any shape and color and make them um, only show up when certain parameters are met under that condition. Uh, barcode we will talk about today as well. Um, this is going to be really important for schools and for um, your company if employees scan in using a barcode. You can make the barcodes about two dozen different types of barcodes, but we're going to focus on the standard code 39 for today. So let's get started. First thing let's do is let's find an image that we want to use. You click on it, you make it yellow, and then the plus sign. If you hold your left mouse down, you can drag kind of in the area that you want and let go. This border right here always is going to be black. And if you're like me, that most logos do not have their own borders additional on there. So just click on it and make it transparent just like that. We're going to load from file. And let's do our new bar logo. There it is. Okay. Maintain aspect ratios on so we don't alter the logos. And then there you go. So I put it like that. If I wanted to make it larger or smaller, I can use my left mouse and grab the bottom corner and do it that way. But none of this is going to show up on the badge, just this. Because remember, only the white shows up on the badge. But that's a little bit too big, so we're going to take it here. Now, what you can do from there is you can click the whole thing with your left mouse and drag it wherever you want to. You can use your uh, cursor keys, your up and down, left, right arrows. Or if you really want to make sure it's centered, you can right mouse click on it and click center horizontally. Also, you can center vertically, which puts it dead center of the card. I choose to use my card for other reasons, so we're going to put this up here. Now you've made an image. Now, let's make a text label. And let's just do the text label, same thing. You click it, use your left mouse to drag it kind of where you want it. And this is going to look very similar to Microsoft Word at this point. We're going to uh, center it. This is our font. I'm happy with all of that. I always take auto size off so I can uh, decide what size I want to make it. And then from here, you just type what you want. Some people are better at typing than I am, and that's okay. Now, if that looks good to us, we're going to go ahead and click it. Now, see how that doesn't fit on there? It's as simple as lowering this down to get it to fit on the badge. And then from here, center horizontally, push it down a little bit. There. Now, these are the things that are not going to change on the badge. Now, let's talk about things that will change on a badge. That's when data fields come in. So right now, we're not going to worry about compound fields today. We're just going to use a data field, and I'm going to use my left mouse and click after I've selected data field. Click kind of where I want it, drag it. And when you let go of the mouse, this pulls up. So we're going to name this data field just name. Right? And then I'm going to make it bold so it stands out a little bit. And click in there. So, and I want to come back in and center it so it shows up in the middle of the badge. So when we get to data entry, that's the only time you're going to be able to enter your, your data or your name. Now let's do another data field and just call it employee ID number. Now this one is very important. To make sure there's no human error possible and that you do not accidentally create 
two employees' badges or two students' badges with the same ID number, we're going to mark this as unique. Not only will that prevent that, but when we get to the photo field, it'll make it a lot easier to save your photos. So we're going to mark this as unique. We're going to make sure it is centered and we're not going to bold it. Click OK. There's the ID number. Pretty simple. Now that we have a ID number, we can click barcode. Barcode is going to come in here, kind of where we want it. Right now it's saying error in barcode because we have not told the barcode what we want it to do. So we want it to be ID number on there. Here's a list of all the different barcodes you can use. We're going to use code 39. And right here, we want it to make sure we're printing on the K panel on the ribbon. If you do not check this, it will use the YMCK part to make your ribbon, which will be a not as clear and a little bit fuzzy because it's using every color under the sun to make black. Or you can just click print on K panel and it will only use the black panel to make the barcode. We can click OK now, but if you wanted the barcode to actually show the ID number underneath it. Instead of having it right here under ID number, you can click barcode, show barcode text, and click OK. Then it will show the barcode down here. But for this point, we will not be using that today since this badge has their ID number already listed on there. Now we're going to make sure we can center that horizontally, make sure that one's centered horizontally, make it look a little bit nicer. Now, photo field. Now that you have an ID number and it is set to be unique, you can click on the photo, drag it where you want it. We're going to maintain the aspect ratio. Now, we're going to use a folder data source. And what it's going to do is anytime you go into data entry and make a badge, it's going to look for somebody's ID number .jpg in that folder. If that photo already exists, it will automatically pull that photo in. But right now, if we're not looking for key field, we want ID number. Now we can do the name, but chances are there's more than one Mary in your large corporation and it may not find it. So then you say, where is my folder? Find your folder. Now, if I had any photos in there, it will automatically pull them in. This is also where you can change your border, make it anything you want. I like a little bit more proud folder. There you go. Now, to center this up, once again, you can center horizontally. There, you've made a badge. Now, before we take another step forward, we want to show you conditional fields. So let's do another data field, and I'm going to do the data field just over here in the gray where it won't show up. Okay, And we're going to call it um, lunch pass. And it's going to be a yes or no question. Advanced data field on that, we want to make sure the default is no. Or if the case is yes, make sure you put it yes. Click OK. Now, this is not going to be put on the badge, but it will be in the data entry. So let's say we're going to make a rectangle. Clicked on it, use my left key, and I'm going to make a bar here. I'm going to uh, make it the outside transparent, and I'm going to fill this up with an obnoxious color. And if we clicked OK on here, this is going to show up on the badge always. But we don't want it always to be on the badge. Let's double click on it again and click this button that says conditional. And it's asking what the condition is. We only want it to display when lunch pass equals yes. OK. 
Now you'll see it here, but you won't see it unless somebody's lunch pass is equal to yes. On the same note, you can have another one that's red and it only displays when it's no. So let's, I'm going to just select it and I'm going to copy it. Now I'm going to paste it and I'm going to put this right on top of the other one. Double click on it. Let's change this to red and edit the condition on this one and it's going to be no. There you go. Now, we're going to save it. Data entry. And your data entry is, is pretty simple to do. You can view it like an Excel spreadsheet like I do or you can view it as a record, which will give you your nice little box here. But we don't have any uh, data in here yet. So we're going to go to table. We're going to go to add. It's going to give you a little preview here. And the defaults no, so it's already showing up red. So let's do, type in a name. Johnny Martin, his ID number is one, two, three, four, five, six. A photo. Now you can right mouse click to capture the image or load one from file. We are going to capture an image. No, let's load from file. Do I have a folder? that has photos. Let's go to um, I have no idea. Here we go. Let's go here. Let's see what I have. Oh, this guy looks fun. There we go. And then from here, I'm just dragging it a little bit bigger because it's maintaining that aspect ratio, right? There you go. When I hit save, you should see all of this appear on this badge. There you go. But um, he has got a lunch pass. We're going to make that yes. Click save, and it should turn green. All right, I look like I know what I'm doing. So I spelled his name wrong. It's Johnny. Save again. And that is how you do it. Okay, so that's how you make a basic badge and with conditional fields. I hope you learned as much as I did today. Sure. And if you still have issues or you're not comfortable creating your own ID, that's something that our Newbart customers receive um, as being a part of our club. Mm -hmm. So when you purchase all of your supplies with Newbart, um, you know, we're here to offer you unlimited technical support when it comes to your software or your printer. So you can always reach out to us as well and we'll be happy to assist. And as always, if you have a video that you would like for us to make and show you, just let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And also find us on uh, LinkedIn, not on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. LinkedIn. And LinkedIn. We are on LinkedIn. I am LinkedIn. Have a good day.